Kilimanjaro 101, the beginner's guide to climbing Kilimanjaro. If you're thinking about climbing Kilimanjaro, but don't know a thing about it, then this video is for you. I'll tackle the most frequently asked questions and common misconceptions about climbing Kilimanjaro and set the record straight. First things first, it's okay to be a beginner. Up to half of our clients have spent little to no time in the outdoors before booking their expeditions with us, and they perform just as well as our seasoned hikers and backpackers. So the summit is definitely within your reach, no matter what your experience. Okay, let's dive in. Where is Mount Kilimanjaro? Mount Kilimanjaro is located in Tanzania, a country in East Africa. It's accessible through Kilimanjaro International Airport, which is served by major airline carriers. How tall is Mount Kilimanjaro? Kilimanjaro is 19,341 feet tall. For comparison, the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, is 2,722 feet tall. Everest Base Camp is 17,600 feet high, while its peak is 29,029 feet high. Why is Kilimanjaro famous? Kilimanjaro is famous due to a few reasons. First, it's the tallest peak in Africa, making it one of the seven summits. Second, the mountain has a permanent but shrinking ice cap, which appears unusual for being in a place with such a warm year-round climate. And third, in 1936, Ernest Hemingway wrote a short story entitled The Snows of Kilimanjaro, which was made into a film in 1952. How long does it take to climb Kilimanjaro? It varies. Kilimanjaro can be completed in as little as 5 days or as many as 9 days, depending on the selected route. There are 7 main routes for climbing Kilimanjaro, which originate from several points around the mountain. How much hiking is done each day? The typical day hike is just 4-6 to six hours at a slow pace. The purpose for the gradual progress is to slowly gain altitude so the body can adjust to the decreasing oxygen levels. However, the final push to the summit and descent is a very long day, which typically takes 10 to 14 hours. How hard is it to climb Kilimanjaro? It depends on the route. It is often reported that half of the people who attempt to climb will fail. However, this can be mitigated by choosing longer routes that have higher success rates. The best routes take 8 or 9 days and have 85 to 95% success rates. Some operators encourage visitors to book the cheapest and so-called easiest 5-day Morangu route, also known as the tourist route. Unfortunately, this route actually has the lowest success rate because it is too short for acclimatization for most people. What makes climbing Kilimanjaro difficult? Mostly it's the elevation. At the peak, there is about half the oxygen in the air as there is at sea level. Operating in a low oxygen environment stresses the body. The body needs to adapt to high altitude to continue functioning or risk becoming sick. Gradual ascent is the key to decreasing the chances of altitude sickness, which is why those who climb the longer routes fare better. Does Kilimanjaro require technical climbing, such as rock climbing or ice climbing? Kilimanjaro is a hiking peak. There is no technical climbing, meaning it does not require the use of mountaineering equipment such as ropes or harnesses. There is very little exposure or risk of injury due to a fall and no steep drop-offs on the trails. There are some short sections where some scrambling is required, but the vast majority of the climb only involves trekking. In other words, if you can walk, you can climb Kilimanjaro. Is climbing Kilimanjaro dangerous? Kilimanjaro is not dangerous relative to other high peaks, but there are about 10 reported deaths every year out of the approximately 30,000 people who climb, mostly due to acute mountain sickness. Having good guides who have the right medical training is very important for all climbers. Our guides are experts who are trained to prevent, detect, and treat altitude sickness. Do you need a guide to climb Kilimanjaro? It is a requirement for anyone climbing Kilimanjaro to be accompanied by a guide who is licensed by the Kilimanjaro National Park. Our climbs are fully supported, which means our clients have a team of crew members that accompany them up the mountain. The mountain crew consists of a lead guide, assistant guides, cooks, and porters. 
How much gear do you need to carry? You only need to carry a small day pack weighing about 15 pounds. Our team of porters will transfer your other belongings from camp to camp, as well as the community gear such as tents, sleeping pads, cooking equipment, food, and even tables and chairs. We'll take care of most of the weight, so you can simply enjoy the hikes. How fit do you need to be to climb Kilimanjaro? You don't have to be an Olympic athlete or superhuman. A reasonable degree of fitness is sufficient for most people to have a successful climb. As we mentioned before, Kilimanjaro is suitable for beginners. They do very well. The best advice is for everyone to arrive in great shape. Don't underestimate the climb because you know someone who did it who you believe was not fit. Train for the adventure. When is the best time to climb Kilimanjaro? The best time to climb Kilimanjaro is during one of the two dry seasons. This region does not have four seasons given its location in Tanzania. It has wet and dry seasons. The main dry season is from July to October. The second dry season is from December to February. Both of these windows are great for climbing Kilimanjaro. Don't come during the wet season unless you're an experienced backpacker, and even then we don't recommend it. Do you sleep in a tent? Yes, for the most part, when climbing Kilimanjaro, you are camping. There is one route that has sleeping huts, but it is not one of the preferred routes. We provide tents, foam sleeping pads, and rental sleeping bags for our clients. It's camping, but it's cozy. How cold does it get? Some people think Kilimanjaro doesn't get cold because it's in Africa. Conversely, the top of the mountain is very cold and windy, especially at night. The coldest temperatures one would experience here usually range between 20 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Are there campfires on Kilimanjaro? Campfires are not allowed on Kilimanjaro. There is simply not enough wood to support open fires. What do you eat when climbing Kilimanjaro? On a fully supported Kilimanjaro expedition, the food is prepared by a mountain chef and his team. The entrees that are served typically are Western-style dishes that a visitor would find familiar and delicious, such as spaghetti with meat sauce, fried chicken with fries, chicken curry with rice, and beef stew with potatoes. Ultimate Kilimanjaro clients will even get a taste of local foods such as ugali and cabbage and sweet desserts. Where do you poop? There are public toilets at each campsite, but they are filthy. We bring a private, portable toilet on every climb for our clients. The commode itself is plastic. A tent, which is shaped and sized like a phone booth, covers it for privacy. This is set up at every camp. If you have to go while hiking, you do your business behind a bush or a rock. Are there showers on Kilimanjaro? There are no showers on Kilimanjaro. If you want, bring wet wipes and towel off when you feel funky or you can use the warm water bowls we supply to rinse off here and there. Otherwise, just get over it. Wash your face and hands and forget the rest. Sure, you might smell a little bit, but so will everyone else. How much does it cost to climb Kilimanjaro? Climb prices in the industry are all over the board. Our most popular route, the 8-day Lamosha route, retails for just over $3,000. Park fees alone account for much of the cost, followed by staff wages. Budget companies, who offer very poor services, may run this climb for less than $2,000. Luxury companies sell the same service for up to $6,000. Don't pick an operator because it seemed like a good deal or looked good on their website. The best operators like Ultimate Kilimanjaro have a long-standing reputation for quality in their staff, equipment, food, and service. Only climb with guides who are medically trained to handle emergencies. The best companies will have outstanding reviews from customers and be respected by their peers in the industry. Do your homework. Do I need a lot of gear to climb Kilimanjaro? Climbing Kilimanjaro does require quite a bit of gear. The climb goes through several distinct ecological zones, starting in the rainforest and peaking in the Arctic zone. The clothing you take on the mountain needs to be able to keep you warm and dry through cold and wet weather conditions. You will need some technical clothing consisting of waterproof, insulated, breathable fabrics, good footwear, and other equipment such as a sleeping bag, day pack, and a duffel bag. 
See the Ultimate Kilimanjaro gear list for details linked in the description. Can I climb Kilimanjaro as a complete novice? Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. His statement is true for Kilimanjaro. As long as you put effort into your preparation and follow our guidelines, you can definitely climb Kilimanjaro safely and successfully. What's the next step if I want to climb Kilimanjaro? Visit our website for everything you need to know about climbing Kilimanjaro. Our expedition coordinators will help you plan every aspect of your trip. Join our Facebook discussion group to connect with others who are considering booking a climb just like you. And please like and subscribe for more Kilimanjaro videos. I'll see you on the summit.